Runway just changed the AI video forever. And no, that's not clickbait. Today, we are witnessing one of those rare moments in AI history where one company stops everything to listen to creators and ends up completely redefining what's possible in AI filmmaking. Runway just introduced references and it's not just an update, it's a revolution. Consistent characters? Sold. Consistent locations, objects, clothes, even different angles, done. Three characters in the same scene, industry record. It's like you are not typing prompts anymore, you are directing a scene, talking to your cinematographer. I tested every edge case to see how far this goes, and if you are thinking about building a cinematic universe in AI, this might be the tool we've all been waiting for. Is this the best solution yet to one of the AI's biggest video problems? In this video, we will figure it all out. How to use references, its strengths and weaknesses. Let's explore together. Getting started with Runway Gen 4 references is very easy. You will find references under Generate Image or Generate Video Options. And all you need to do is starting a new session to access references. And there it is. To use a character's image consistently as a reference, you need to drag and drop that to References section here. Once you do that, it will automatically upload it to the Recent References section down below, as well as on top of the prompt box right here. Recent References is great because it allows you to easily switch between characters, add or remove characters from your prompt box. It's a very handy feature. Let's add another reference here, maybe a reference of a location. I'm going to add a desert scene as a reference here. Now, I have two references. First one is a reference of a character's face and second one is a location. Prompting with references on frame is very easy. My intention is to place her to this desert scene. I wrote cinematic photo of the woman on the desert, medium shot, muted tones, same color and lightning from image one. I want to keep these colors and light from image one. That's why I'm able to refer to image one within my prompt. I actually just wrote woman as a reference and Runway is clever enough to understand that I'm referring to this woman on my references section, which is really cool. Now let's hit generate. Keep in mind that you can use maximum three references. This allows quite a lot of flexibility for you. You can use references for objects, clothing, multiple characters, even three characters. I will show you all of these cases one by one. And here, in a perfect way, consistently, my character is placed on the desert sea. This looks completely amazing. And resemblance to my original image is really high. It's very impressive. You can use different camera angles for same character. You can literally control the camera in this scene right now. I would like to see her from side profile. And for this, I'm updating the shot type on my prompt. Side profile. My side profile shots are ready. I would like to see full body shot. Full body shot is here. Let's do behind back shot, over the shoulder shot, low angle shot, high angle shot, a dynamic action shot of my subject running. Now, one of the cool things about Runway is once you generate your images and scenes with your consistent characters, you can easily switch back to Runway Gen 4 via video tab here. And you can, for example, drag and drop this image here and directly prompt for the camera motion. I wrote camera follows her while she's running on the desert. Here, camera pans right to reveal how massive the desert is. We have a dolly in to her face. I edit slowly to set the pace of camera motion. And we have a tracking shot from behind as she's sprinting at high speed and she's then finding an oasis. It's very easy to bring scenes you created on frames to Runway Jam 4 and actually building a mini AI film with that. Okay, let's go back to image creation. Using references feature, creating consistent scenes with multiple characters is possible. Let's introduce character two and let these two characters have some interactions between each other. For this job, I'm bringing a new character of a robot. Here's my new character, a robot well adapted to desert environment. For easier asset management, I'm gonna rename these people. I will call her Maya. Here will be desert and this character will be Bender. Now let's create some scenes. I wrote cinematic photo of Maya and Bender standing on the desert, medium shot, muted tones. And I would like to still keep the same colors from Maya's photo for a consistent style and look. Let's hit generate. I got this error of violating usage policy and I realized that it's because I named the robot as a Bender 
and this actually triggered their system. I think due to copyright issue, to bypass this error, all I need to do is I'm gonna rename the robot as Lithium. This is amazing. Look at this, they're both in the same scene and they look quite consistent. Okay, here there's a bit of problem you can see, but this shot is also quite good. And you will realize that Maya's outfit keep changing. If you wanna keep the outfit consistent, you can specifically mention that in your prompt, but for me, that wasn't the priority. For now, I can remove these references and I will just proceed with this scene here. And I would like to show you how this scene looks from a ball. So I'll show these two from a ball bird's eye shot I wrote. I'm gonna generate this scene now. I have bird's eye view shot. Here's another one. And I want these two to find an oasis in the middle of the desert and sitting there. All right, so they definitely found their oasis and they are chilling there. Here's another one, little bit of refreshment. Very understandable after spending hours in the desert. I will show you how contextual runway frames is while maintaining consistency in environments. So I'm gonna select this scene, remove this one for a while. And I ask, show me a close up of the palm in the scene. Same color grade and lightning from image one. Let's hit generate and show me a close up of the water in the scene. And here I got the palm close up where water and desert is also visible. And this show how contextual and consistent the location is. And here's the close up of the water. And I wrote, show me the same scene, but from outside of the oasis on desert side, high angle shot. I wanna see how these two looks like from outside of where they are chilling. You will realize that greenery increased a little bit in the scene. And this one looks close, but I think a third character appears here. So it's not perfect, but still very impressive that how we are able to change perspective and camera angles so easily. And we can always switch to video mode and pull this in as image to video and wrote aerial drone shot, drone moves forward and we can generate a video. And there you have the aerial drone shot. Storytelling with character and object consistency is very important for us. And now I will show you how you can achieve that. So it's time to introduce a new character. And I introduced a second reference, image of a Barretta gun. For easier reference, I'm gonna name this character Olga, and this is the gun. I wrote cinematic photo of Olga holding the gun and wearing a suit, she's walking on a corridor, muted tones. Let's generate this scene. In some of the outputs I had struggle, but this one looks pretty close. So I have a consistent looking character and gun looks very consistent with slight problem in the hand area here, but this would work out fine. And this is a great opportunity to use some of the camera motion types that I showed you before. Here the handheld shot, the arc shot, and leading shot. By the way, if you are enjoying the content, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Okay, let's introduce another character. I'm gonna name this character Manuela and I have the rifle here and I kinda like the outfit from Olga here. So I think I'm going to use this as a reference. So I drag and drop here. Cinematic photo of Manuela wearing the outfit from image three and holding the rifle. Okay, let's try this one instead. All right, so here Manuela looks like the original reference image and she's holding the rifle and wearing this outfit. Pretty impressive runway, pretty impressive. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use this reference now. I don't need Manuela's face and rifle and outfit anymore. So instead I can just use this. And I edit this super crazy hairstyle as a reference. And I wrote cinematic photo of the woman has hairstyle like image two, and she's standing near the beach in golden hour. Let's see what this will bring. <laughs> okay, this is quite crazy. I got the hairstyle and she definitely resembles, she looks like Manuela, but I lost the suit. And that's totally fine because I didn't specify that in my prompt, so that's not an issue. And Runway brought her to the beach. Now let's try to see if we can use this for product photography and ad making. I added the Coca-Cola product as a product photo. And I wrote cinematic photo of the woman holding the Coca-Cola from image two in one hand and rifle in the other one. It generate and it somehow worked. There is definitely some deformation on the images, but it's so impressive. I mean, like this is like still a first gen product. Okay, I think I'm gonna continue with this shot. It's a really nice shot by the way. So I don't need this and this anymore. I'm gonna use this as a reference. And I want to get Olga back to scene. 
And I wrote cinematic photo of these two women looking at each other and smiling. And we got it with some deformations and some issues with the hand and holding objects, but we got the characters, which is the most important. And I can drag and drop this and make a simple ad out of it. Let's say Dutch angle shot, hit generate, or maybe let's just use locked camera if we don't want camera to move. And she's drinking Coca-Cola. And here's locked camera. She's drinking Coca-Cola. And here's the Dutch angle shot. Character expressions and emotions are also a very monumental part of AI filmmaking. And Frames is pretty good with that. Here I used the image of a new character as a reference. And I wanted this character to be meditating in a skyscraper in futuristic Japan. And I wanted her to have a calm expression. So I had issues with the bunny head piece that it didn't really transform into the final image. But again, this can be easily solved by prompting. But most importantly, the calm expression was here. With the same reference, I also wanted to render happy emotions. And happy face expression was here, at least in one of the images in the grid, that it worked out fine. In others, there was a little bit of deformation, I realized. And I thought, hmm, maybe this has something to do with specifying an emotion. And this is somehow conflicting with the face in the reference image. This can be potentially a reason. But when it comes to character emotions, you are not actually dependent only on frames. Once you generate the setting you want to have with a certain character, you can always switch back to Runway Gen 4, and there you can render any emotion you want in a much more dynamic way. In this example, I use two references, the reference 1 and reference 2, with the very distinct looking characters. And I brought these two characters to a futuristic cafe, and they are looking at each other super angry. So here it's able to see a little bit of anger and we have also the situation here where they look at each other, they kind of stare at each other. So this looks good. This was funny because then I use one of these shots, this one in particular, edit as a reference. And then I wrote cinematic photo of this woman, wide shot and view from outside of the futuristic cafe. And it gave me the outside, but you will realize that there are certain inconsistencies with the original reference image. So we lost other people sitting in the cafe. Cafe suddenly got really smaller. But what impressed me the most is it understood this prompt that I want the same exact scene, but from a perspective from outside of the cafe, which is really impressive. Another cool thing is you can also use non-human characters as a reference. For example, here I added this mecha to my reference and I was able to generate this fantastic shot here with the consistent character of Lena with the mecha together in the same scene. It also worked out really fine with animal character. I had these two women and I added this desert fox to my composition and it was able to render it really well. So here we had a bit of confusion with the bunny head piece, but the rest of the characters and the fox is all together in the same scene. And note that now we are actually in three references. So we have three characters. In the end, let's make the three characters we saw throughout the video meet in the desert. We have Lena, Manuela and Maya and they are hanging out all together now. Here's another one. And cool thing here is we are actually able to specify their pose and body posture. For example, here I wanted Lena to be standing. I wanted Manuela to be aiming with her rifle in the kneeling position and Maya is kicking the sand. Sometimes pose is not quite there, uh, but I got the low angle shot here. So it's like almost 80% prompt following, which is impressive considering that you have three reference points. So I think this is very cool. I got a few more cool examples with the same prompt. Instead of a kick, this time I gave Maya a boxing position with arms up. And here there was another cool render, but unfortunately with a little bit of morphing on the hands here, which needs to be fixed. And of course, you can always take these scenes and make a great video out of it using different camera motions. This references feature works with style reference as well, which is an interesting use case. I used the image of my three characters hanging out together here with this style reference as a little bit abstract. And I wrote this woman in the visual style of image two. So it was able to give me something. Of course, maybe it's not as good as Midjourney Star Reference at this point or some of the other solutions out there, but it's actually quite good. And hopefully this video was truly helpful for you. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more in-depth tutorials. If you want to learn more about future of storytelling, click here.